Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Eight Minutes with Activate. In today's episode, we are joined by Callum Evans, e-commerce account executive here at Activate, and we'll be discussing the basics of setting up an Amazon storefront. So, Callum, for sellers who may be new to the feature, what are Amazon storefronts and who can have one? So, firstly, thanks for having me. It's uh, great to be talking to you. Um, to answer your question, Amazon storefronts, they're essentially a mini website on the Amazon platform. They're great for showcasing your product range, as well as any new product launches, telling your brand story and communicating your brand values, as well as any other benefits that we'll go into later on in this interview. Um, so to start with, to set up your own Amazon storefront, you are required to have Amazon brand registry enrollment. So applying for this requires a registered and active image-based trademark or text-based trademark issued by the WIPO. Now, a couple of years ago, these storefronts were only available in a couple of countries, um, such as the US and the UK. However, in the past couple of years, these have been rolled out across many other territories. So in most different Amazon places, you can now have an Amazon storefront. That's great. And why are storefronts beneficial for Amazon sellers? What can brands hope to gain using this feature? I think Ollie, who works in our PPC here, would be very annoyed if I didn't first mention that it opens up the possibility for branded headline ads. This is where your store and products you select can appear in a banner at the top of the search results and it proves very, very beneficial in practice. One of the reasons I personally love storefronts is that it enables brands to really tell their story and connect with the audience on another platform. As I said earlier, it's essentially a mini site for your brand. So to be able to keep telling your story that you tell on your website and try to keep true across all platforms, it's a real benefit. Um, Amazon, or, Amazon storefronts also help keep your audience only looking at your products. When browsing through Amazon, the platform is really good at cross-selling and upselling with different sellers' products. So having your own storefront where you can do this yourself helps keep potential customers from wavering off. And finally, the with Amazon, it can take a bit of time to get listings ranked higher in the search results. So the final strength of storefronts that I'd like to mention is that it enables you to put any new products right in the spotlight on your store. You can keep your first full page building block dedicated to a new product. So it's the first thing your audience will see, whereas on the search results, you have to lean against PPC initially. So once brand registry is approved, how can a seller begin to set up an Amazon storefront? Once brand registry is approved, it's a really easy process to first create in your storefront. All you need initially is your logo and the title of your brand, and you input that into the storefront, and then you're free to go to create your first page. So Amazon have three pre-existing layouts that you can utilize and edit, such as the product grid, which features simply the grid of your product, the product highlight, perfect for one of my last points about new launches, where you have a carousel of images featured first and foremost, and finally, you've got the marquee, which is useful for telling the brand story and show different categories. If you're new to creating stores, these templates are great. They're easy and purposeful. Simply drag and drop your content into these blocks or add in any other modules that you wish after. The one I choose personally is the blank page, and this allows you to set up your page however you want to, still with access to the modules shown within the other templates. I believe that this enables you to manage the path in which your audience takes through your storefront far easier and allows you to showcase your content in the way you best see fit. So after you've created it and put in all your content, you have to submit it to Amazon for approval. And this usually takes a couple of days, depending on you know where they're at and how busy the time it is. Sometimes I've had it in a couple of hours, for example. Before submitting to Amazon, there is a ton of guidelines. I won't say every single one because it is pages long. However, the key ones to really follow is that Amazon really appreciates clarity across their platform. This is especially the case with storefronts. Everything you, you create is required to be clear and easy to use. For example, not only do typos bring down the look of your store, but Amazon can actually reject your store for any of these. You have to be careful with your CTAs also. They have to be clear and direct with no pressuring language such as, such as last chance or don't miss out. Examples of acceptable CTAs are learn more, see more, shop now, that type of thing. Usually on websites as well, there's a page that I often go to first, and it's the sales page. Um, you, this you can feature within a storefront. However, there's very strict guidelines around it. So I'd look into these before you actually create that. Um, for example, if you do have any text or titles that say deals or anything that they could deem you know, near that, it has to have the widget called fit, featured deals right next to it. Um, 
And it's the same with an actual page. If you have a page dedicated to featured fields, which you may have across Amazon, it has to have this widget at the very top. Otherwise, they will decline when you try to push it forwards. Um, the common reasons for rejections as well, as well as the usual policies with most advertising, such as not pro promoting anything inappropriate, certifications and awards need to be referenced. And this is usually one that will hinder the approval. Um, this also goes for any claims you make, such as this is the best product on the market. So unless you have an actual award to state that that is the case, I would steer clear from any of that language and make sure you cite and reference any awards that you may be talking about across your storefront. Based on this, what type of content can brands add to a storefront? Would a brand be able to use existing content from their website or socials, or do they have to start from scratch? So to start with the type of content that's seen on most storefronts, this can be broken down into images, videos, shoppable content, and live product modules. So images are easy to explain and are featured in 99% of stores. These can range from lifestyle to product shots and can have text overlay in the image if you'd also like. Video is a really good way to boost the performance of your storefront, whether that's videos on the brand, product launches, or even tutorials. They're a really good way to keep people within your store. One of the modules that I love is the shoppable content. This enables you to use lifestyle images or product shots with multiple products um, that your audience can actually click on and go straight to the product listing or add to basket even right from that page. Um, and finally, you've got one of the most basic blocks within the site, which is the live product block. So you simply search the ASIN within here and it would showcase with the um, bullet points, for example, the feed, the star rating and the price as well. Um, on to your other one about the, the importance of creating channel specific content. You can use content from other platforms, absolutely. However, it needs to be optimized for this platform. Any out of shape or weirdly cropped imagery is gonna really stick out like a sore thumb. So it's a good place to start. However, I'd also make sure that in the future down the line, content that's taken specifically for this platform is also used. Modules are pretty friendly in terms of sizing though. Um, so, you know, existing content, it usually is absolutely fine. And finally, what kind of results can sellers expect to see? So results really vary depending on the brand and storefront and market, for example. However, it can undoubtedly boost the, your presence on the platform. Um, for search results, for example, storefronts allow for more PPC possibilities with the use of branded headline ads, as we mentioned earlier. This will allow you to not only feature organically and within the paid promotions, however, you'd also have your banner at the very top of the search results. Once your audience is also within your store, it really boosts your chance of capturing any sales without them purchasing from competitors, as there's no way for them to advertise on your store pages. Um, to me, though, it's more of an emotive response with storefronts. They enable you to build that bit more of a relationship with your audience as you can tell your story and showcase your values. Thanks for joining us today, Callum. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with Activate.